He learned everything within the womb. You have fourteen great possibilities within you. He told his soldiers, if one drop spills out of this vessel, take his head off. One day, two days, three days, four days, he stood there. There was a sage, a very… a profound sage. His name was Sukha. He was the son of Vedavyasa. Sukha learnt everything that he can learn, all the scriptures and the knowledge and the traditions and everything. When he was in his mother's womb, he learnt everything within the womb. When he came out, he came as a… a child sage. So he was a Bala Brahmachari, nobody initiated him, but he is like that. One day, Sukha thought he must go to Vaikuntha and meet Vishnu. So he went there. The gods stopped him and they said, what? He said, I'm Sukha, son of Vedavyasa, I want to see Vishnu. They looked at him and said, we see that you're fully stuffed with knowledge. We can see Vedas in your body, Upanishads in your body, every other scripture in your body, but you don't have a guru, you have no admission here, just go back. So Sukha was confused because he had never thought what is a guru because everything that he… anybody would want to know was already with him when he was born. So he came back to his father and he said, Father, they would not let me into Vaikuntha. They said, I need a guru, what is that? I want that. They are saying my knowledge is not good enough. Then Vedavyasa said, see there is only one person who can be your guru. This is King Janak. Sukha said, okay, I will go there. And then he went. He went there and he saw at the gates of the palace, he looked at the palace, a very elaborate, luxurious building with lots of aesthetics. He said, this is not a place where my guru can live. This looks too luxurious and not right for a spiritual person. So he turned back, went again, again asked his father. His father said, Janaka is the only guru for you. Again he went, again he saw king was relaxing in the garden with his queen. He said, oh, this is not the man and he went back. Like this, this up and down trips happened twelve times. Then the thirteenth time, where the Vyasa said, see, you have fourteen great possibilities within you. Twelve you have wasted in these twelve trips. There are just two more, it's up to you. So, Sukha went to the palace gates, he did not like the opulence of the palace. The way people were all well-dressed in silks, he didn't like that, he said, this is not a spiritual place. But uh, because his father had warned him, there are just two more left, if you lose that, you've lost everything. So, he went in. So, he said, I want to see the king. First thing he was expecting, he, Sukha, the son of Vedavyasa, when he comes, the king will come and receive him. Nobody came. Then he came and uh, requested, I want to meet the king. So Janaka inquired, where is he standing? They mentioned where. He was standing in a place where normally, out of the palace, they throw all the refuse, it goes and falls in a pit. He was standing in that place. King Janaka said, tell him to stand right there. He stood there. As evening came, the day's garbage, they started throwing it out. So he stood there, one day, two days, three days, four days, he stood there. A heap of garbage covered him, but he just stood there. Then King Janaka asked, what's happening? 
that's it, he's standing right there. He said, ask him to wash up, give him some fresh clothes and bring him here. So that was done and then he went in front of Janaka. Janaka said, see, in honor of your arrival, I have organized a whole lot of celebration and festivities, lot of things happening around here. Go and enjoy yourself, but just carry this vessel with you. The vessel was full of milk to the very brim. He said, carry this vessel with you and just what we have organized in your honor, please enjoy the festivities and come back. So, Sukha carried this vessel and went. It's too full. He said, he told his soldiers, if one drop spills out of this vessel, take his head off. So, when your head is go in question, you know, you walk carefully. Very carefully, without spilling a drop, he walked through all the festivities and came back. So, did you enjoy the festivities? Uh, Janaka asked. He said, what festivity? I was just watching the milk. So, Janaka said, I want you to know this is me. Just to see that the milk doesn't spill, you needed so much attention. Keeping my connection with the divine, it needs lot more attention. But still, look at me, I'm still involved with everything around me. You are still in a place, if you focus on one thing, the other thing won't happen to you. So you need to work. And he took him as a disciple, a man who was considered by everybody as a celebrated born sage, born as a sage. But he needed this because one thing is to withdraw, to connect with the deepest core of who we are, at the same time to be able to be active. My whole work is about this. My work is not a teaching, not a philosophy, not an ideology, it is not a from a scripture. These are simply technologies to give you tools where if you sit here, your body is here, your psychological space is working somewhere else, what is you is little away from this. Once you have a little distance between you and your body, physical suffering is over. Once there is a little distance between you and your psychological process, mental suffering is over. You can enjoy everything, you can be involved in everything, but never entangled in everything.